the pandemic again shows that there is no alternative to the digital transformation. And to give you also you know, one practical example around the production and the logistics of the vaccine, we are actually working together with all leading enterprises. And SAP is not only helping to make the IT more efficient, it's actually about you know, shortening the time up to the vaccination or to help the companies to scale the production. And again, this is not only about technology, this is about transforming the business. This is about adapting their business models to circumvent lockdowns in countries and other things. And today, indeed, we are going to announce WISE with SAP because SAP is uniquely positioned uh, to actually allow our customers to transform their business holistically as we are actually have the knowledge and the insights from over 400,000 customers. We have the data. We're going to infuse that in the business processes of our customers. And in conjunction with our leading cloud software, we are going to make the business transformation happen end to end. And today is the announcement day. Satya will be with me. Others will be with me. So I also hope you are going to join me this afternoon live online. Oh, Christian, yes, we're looking forward to it with much interest. I want to get into the timeline around digital transformation because uh, we heard from Microsoft's uh, Sachin Nadella overnight who was talking about a second wave of this digital transformation. From other conversations I've had with technology giants in the sector, including IBM, it feels as though we've been in this early transition to even towards cloud computing services. What do you make of how wide that timeline is for your customers from those who've been very quick to adopt uh, digital uh, technology and others who've only just been embracing it because of this pandemic? Yeah, that's a good question. Actually, we see, you know, different phases, you know, of our customers, you know, being in their digital transformation journey. Take the public sector. Now here in Germany, I guess there's definitely some upside, yeah, when I do how we're going to master the homeschooling of our kids. Yeah, but there's also other industries like the automotives. I mean, they are coming now to SAP and said, how can we digitize the complete supply chain? Uh, to manage this volatile market, to manage demand and supply, as SAP has all of that data. So we are moving all of them to the cloud together with our partners. And then, you know, they are going to share their data so that they can react faster uh, to these fast changing market conditions. And look, the picture is different from industry to industry. Pharma, I just mentioned uh, the example around the vaccine. Retail, all going now omnichannel overnight. We switch many customers to commerce, curbside pickup. So actually the pandemic is a huge accelerator for the digital transformation, which is good for SAP as we provide the software to really make it work. Yeah, I think, um, Christian, the argument's been won already, hasn't it, on digitization, quite frankly. And any company at the moment that isn't looking at how it can improve its processes by using the cloud or other digital services, quite frankly, is going to be left behind and they're going to be a victim of, 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 of the history of modernization, leaving them behind. So my question to you then is, why SAP? Why not somebody else? I mean, when you look what SAP does for almost 50 years now, uh, is actually we are running the world's most mission critical business processes and we have data from over 400,000 customers across 25 industries. So we have the best practices. We see what works. We also see sometimes what doesn't work so well. And now with the launch today, we are packaging these insights up. We infuse the in te technology. We tell our customers, you know, this is how your processes look like. We benchmark them. We redesign them. And then we infuse AI and RPA to really you know, put a huge automation layer on top of the applications we are running for them. And that's a big game changer for our customers because all customers want to transform. The question is more how, and with data, it's also almost much better to try for transformation than just you know, with explaining it with PowerPoints or other kinds of tools. And this is what we are going to do today with the launch of WISE with SAP. And Christian, are you finding any difficulty in nailing down the signature on the paperwork because you're unable to have those in-person conversations that just about all meetings are being done virtually at the moment. Is that slowing the pace of sign up from new customer acquisition? Yeah. So honestly, uh, uh, Geoff, when I got the CEO, you know, almost now nine months ago, there was a bit of a concern. I mean, when, when you're running such massive operations, 
But now look back at 2020, we put over 35,000 customers live. We closed over 10 billion of order entry, new order entry, which gives us a big tailwind now for 2021. So actually SAP has proven its resilience and that's very important these days. Yeah, and we closed very large deals. We have large wins in Q4. Uh, actually on Friday, we have earnings, uh, competitive wins against Oracle with Chiliad. We have signed you know, many new deals in, in HR. So we are very happy about you know, the way SAP is running these days in a complete, as you are saying, remote environment. Um you, like many companies at the moment, are out there in the market um, saying that you are signed up to the climate goals and that you are seeking uh, to encourage other businesses uh, to embrace uh, zero carbon emissions. Can I ask you, Christian, the banks and other financial services companies are being told to disinvest. Um, where do you stand on not taking on board customers who are engaged in the emissions business, i.e. anybody that works in uh, the traditional carbon market of uh, oil and gas? Yeah, so actually that's a good question, Jeff, because we are running this Climate 21 initiative. And when you see what our software does, actually for, you know, for 50 years now, we are driving the productivity of our customers. Now we invented the green line. So we are going to measure the carbon footprint you know, along their value chain. And I can tell you that sustainability is at the top of the agenda of every CEO. We have in the meantime over 500 customers who are co-innovating with us, Nestle, the Unilevers. We have companies from oil and gas who have put out their very aggressive sustainability goals. And now they need software. They need to have, first of all, the insights you know, about the carbon footprint. And then together with our partners, we are providing them the technology to make intelligent decisions on not only how to produce productively, but also how to produce in a very sustainable way. 